Gliding is a very interesting mechanic to add into any VR game. Not only is it a great way to explore a vast world, but it is also a fantastic alternative to traditional locomotion and teleportation movement. So in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to set up a very simple gliding mechanic that you can use in any VR game to add a little bit more variety to how players move around your world. But before we go ahead and jump into that, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below if you enjoy this video and want to see even more just like this one. And while you're down there, go ahead and let me know in the comments what other types of videos you would like to see in the future. With that, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So I've already gone ahead and created a simple template project that we're going to use here. So a couple quick things I want to note real quick about our uh, template projects we have is I've taken out our player start and the reason being is regardless of whether you're in Unreal Engine 4 or Unreal Engine 5, we won't be using the default VR pawn um, or I think in Unreal Engine 4 it's called the motion controller pawn. I may be wrong about that, but basically we won't be using the default VR pawn that's available to us out of the Unreal Engine VR template. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. The other thing that we are going, that I've gone ahead and added in here is I've also gone ahead and added this plane. Uh, this is just quite simple. I'm just going to use this to test our gliding. So it'll give us some errors. So that way we can actually test this once we are all done here. So to start out, let's go ahead and open up our project settings. I'm going to want to go down to input and I want to create an action map in here. Now the action mapping that we're creating creating here, I'm going to call glide and I'm using a valve index. So I'm actually going to tie it to my valve index left or I'm sorry, not left, uh, right a press. I won't be tying it to the left just because it's a little bit awkward for a valve index um, having to hit a and use the analog stick. Um, but basically what we're going to be doing with this is we're going to use this to test out our gliding. We need some kind of trigger in order to actually engage our gliding. So regardless of what, uh, depending on what you're going to be using, will depend on what you end up doing here. Um, like I said, I'm using a button, so I'm setting up a nice simple action mapping. If you're using a gesture or a specific pose that the player has to go into, or maybe it just automatically engages once you fall off of the side of a cliff or something, then that's entirely up to you. Uh, this just could be a nice simple way to test out our gliding here. Next, we're going to want to create our new VR character. Now, I already said that we're not gonna be using the default VR pawn or whatever your default is here. So let me go and close that. We're gonna create a new folder here. I'm gonna call this blueprints. And we're going to want to create a new blueprint class. This is going to be a character. I'm just going to call this gliding character. Now the reason we're using a character as opposed to a pawn, which is what our default VR player is um, in a VR template, is because we want to have access to this character movement component here. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't something you can just give yourself access to in a pawn. And the reason we want access to this is that this will provide us with gravity. It'll also provide us with, if we look up here, air control, which will determine how much control we have over our player while we are in the air. Uh, it'll also allow for us to, uh, we also have just a bunch of other general things like we can very easily implement some movement and things like that. Um, uh, and more specifically, I want to have locomotion movement so that way we can walk up that ramp and easily just fall off. So we actually want to have access to this character movement. Um, and we'll go ahead and uh, manage that once we are in our event graph here. So first we need to make this work for VR. And for that, we need to add three components. First, we need a camera component. And I'm just gonna leave it called camera. We don't need to do anything to this. This will automatically tie to our HMD um, or head mounted display. And we can actually look that up if we just type in HMD, you can see it'll automatically lock to our HMD. We also want to add in two motion controllers. I'm going to call this left motion controller, and I'm also going to want to create a right motion controller. We don't want these connected to the camera um, or each other. We actually want these attached to the capsule component. And the reason being is that if we attach them to other components, then they may show up way high above our heads and not where they're supposed to be. Uh, we also want to jump into our capsule component. I'm actually going to decrease this radius because this will actually influence our height if we have this too big and we don't want it to do that. Um, and in our left and right controllers, we actually need to do a couple quick things here. 
Uh, first off, we need to go down here in our left. We need to make sure our motion source is set to left. I'm also going to go right over here to display device model and enable that. And I'm going to change this actually from cut from default to custom. And I'm actually just going to set this as a Vive pre-controller mesh. There's also, I believe, Oculus in here. Ooh. Oculus, um, which actually looks like it's based off the CV1 um, Rift controller. Um, but I'm going to be using a Vive pre-controller mesh. They don't have a Valve index, unfortunately. So I'm kind of stuck there. And we need to do the same for the right controller as well. So let's go ahead and do the same here and change this source to right, since this is gonna be tied to our right hand. So now that we have our player all set up here and it is able to work with VR, now we need to jump into our event graph here. Now to start off, uh, I've already gone ahead and cleared off the begin play, the tick, and I forgot what the third one is, but we don't need any of those uh, default events that are here. So to start off, we're going to need to add some input uh, specifically some locomotion input. And for that, if we jump into our project settings, we can actually go into our axis mappings. And we're going to need the movement axis left X and the movement axis left Y, which you can see right here. Uh, these are both going to be tied to our thumbsticks um, and we can use these to add locomotion. So oh, we're going to want to go into our event graph and add movement axis left X. And it needs to be the axis event as well. Um, and we're also going to need our movement axis left Y. So um, uh, grabbing both of these, let's go move these up a bit. And now that we have these, we're going to use both of these to uh, use our movement. And since we, we're using a character, it'll make things quite a bit easier. We can simply jump into here and do add movement input and add that into our movement axis left X. And let's go ahead and duplicate this real quick and drag this over to our Y as well, since this is all we're going to need to influence our movement. And we just need to add a couple things here. So our axis value is going to our scale value. This will be used to basically increase or decrease our speed depending on how much our thumbstick is pressed in any one direction. Um, and then the other thing we're gonna to wanna to do is grab our camera. And since this is the movement axis left X, our X is our left and right. So we're actually going to want to jump over here into our camera and from our camera, we're going to want to get right vector. And that'll go into our world direction. Our world direction is basically what direction do we want to move in. And our scale value is basically how fast in that direction do we want to move, or maybe in how, in how much in that direction we want to move. And we'll need to do the same thing over here for Y. Uh, so we're going to want to grab our camera. Um, but this one's going to be get forward vector instead of get right vector, since this is forward and back. And that, again, will be fed to our world direction. Our axis value goes right into our scale value. And that's really all that we need to do here. Next, let's go ahead and jump down here. And we're going to want to, again, grab our glide, uh, our, our axis of our action event again. And you may remember we made that in our project settings under action mappings uh, right at the beginning. And we're going to want to do a couple things here. Starting with our pressed, we are going to want to first check to see if we are in the air first. And we can actually do this very easily doing using our character movement component. So let's go and grab that and we're going to want to check if it is falling. And we're gonna feed this into a branch. And this will quite simply determine if we are in the air and falling or not. Next, we will want to, again, from our character movement, we'll want to set our velocity, and we're gonna to wanna to modify this uh, using the velocity that we currently have in the air. So if we go and get our velocity, it'll be right near the bottom. Uh, let's go ahead and actually organize this real quick so this is a little bit easier to read. Um, and just make sure all this is looking quite nice here. And there we go. Uh, next, we're going to want to split our struct pin for both velocities. 
and we only need to pass through our x and our y we want to leave the z alone because our z is actually our velocity in the down or in some cases up direction and so we don't want to be falling at a normal speed so we want to leave that zero um, next we're going to want to again reroute our character movement and uh, now that we have that we need to set gravity uh, or set gravity scale my bad and we go and feed that in uh, and this should sound pretty straightforward it's just how much do we want gravity to affect our player and I'll set it to 0.05 I found this a pretty good value for most cases but you can of course increase or decrease if you want gravity to affect the player more or less um, and then we can also go ahead and once more reroute and then we will want to set our air control um, and the reason for this is if we are falling and we are not gliding then we want to have less air control than if we um, th than if we are gliding and we want our air control to be a little bit higher. Uh, I'll set this to 0.7 because I found that's a pretty good value to use. And finally let's go and copy and paste all this, bring it down, and we'll want to use, reuse some of this for our released. Um, so let's go and feed our released into our branch. Um, so the couple of changes we, that we need to make here is first let's go and take out our velocity since we don't need to affect our velocity anymore. Um, and let me go and bring true and and our gravity scale will want to set back to whatever our default is in this case you can see it's 1.0 uh, since we want gravity to affect everything the exact same so we need to set our gravity scale back to 1 and next we're going to need to set our air control back to our default in this case you can see it's 0.05 um, and so I'll go and feed that in there. Now, there is one single issue with this current setup right now. Um, we also need to set this when we finally hit the ground. And the reason for that is if we actually look at this, you will see that this will actually disengage under two conditions. First is that we release. The second is that we actually release while we are still falling. Um, and we can easily fit fix the while well, falling by just bypassing that and just releasing regardless of whether or not we are falling. Uh, but this can still cause some issues if we decide to add in more events later on. Uh, say for example we want to add in particle effects by player or maybe we want to affect speed or anything like that, then we are going to want to make sure that those get set back to whatever their default values are as well. So, um, so with all that, we're going to want to also make sure that, uh, so we're going to want to make sure that our play, that this all gets set back to, fall, to default once we land. And we can actually do that by just doing events on landed. Um, and you can actually see that this is an event that we actually have available to us right here. Um, and so I'll just go and feed that right in, uh, bypassing our is falling and all that. And you can actually see our on landed is just something we, that we can easily pull up here in our character. Um, and that's all that we need for our character. So our character is all set up and uh, this is a really nice little simple setup that we have here. So now let's go and compile save and jump into our main scene. And we're going to want to add this in by just dragging that in. And jumping into our details, we actually want to make sure that this is auto possessed by player zero. Uh, so set that to player zero. And then our auto receive input should also be set to player zero. Uh, and this will just make sure that everything gets grabbed by our default player. And I'll actually go and rotate this myself real quick, uh, just so we're facing the uh, plank and we don't have to have any sort of issues once I finally jump into the scene. So let's go and jump right over. All right, so now that I've gone ahead and jumped in, you can actually see our movement is actually working just fine. And I actually wanna give a quick little tip because I did have a small issue here while I was trying to get this started. 
Um, if the buttons aren't working, go ahead and close down Unreal Engine, restart Steam VR, and uh, make sure it's completely restarted before continuing, and then reopen your project, and everything should work just fine. I've had this issue a couple of times. It's just some kind of weird bug, um, and it was just something that I was having before I had started recording here. Um, but anyways, uh, we can actually see that the look motion is moving, and I'm actually gonna drop off this twice. Uh, first time is actually going to be normal speed, and you can see that's the normal speed. And if I actually go ahead and fall off again, um, this time I'm actually gonna hit the button. So if I actually go ahead and jump off, you can actually see that I glide around, and hopefully you can actually see that uh, I'm, I'm actually gliding. I know this may not look right on the actual screen, but you can actually see uh, I go and jump off and I, I can also disengage and re-engage it multiple times during flight as well. So um, it's, it's, it's a neat little thing to do and it's actually quite a bit of fun to, to do, which is uh, pretty cool. And that's how you put together a nice simple gliding mechanic that you can use within your virtual world. As I said, this is a very interesting mechanic and certainly will not be necessary for every project, but I think it is a great alternative to traditional movement methods or even as an addition to traditional locomotion and teleportation movement. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And also I wanna give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters so you can see over here on the right. With that, I will see you in the next reality.